Pages 438 and 439, we're going to start our new story called Schools Around the World. And, surprisingly, shockingly, this is an informational text. <gasps> we read a lot of those, don't we? Yeah. yeah. We're very familiar with that kind of story. So, that kind of story gives us what? Who can help me out? What do we get from that kind of story? Alina, tell me one thing we get from that kind of story. Facts. Facts. What's something else we get from that story, Angelina? Um, photographs. photographs. What's something else that we get, Zayden? Information. Information. Very good. That goes along with the facts. Gwen, what's something else? Um, we get, um, um, we get real facts. Yeah, true things. Real things that can be proven and true. What do we sometimes or very often see at the top of pages? Oh in our informational stories, Jamie? Oh, headings. headings, right. At the tops of pages, we often see headings, and those headings do what for us? What do they help us do, Levi? They help us tell what the pictures are saying. Uh, not the headings. There's something else that does help us tell the pictures, though, but what does the heading do at the top of a page? The heading um, tells you about facts. Um, not so much, Angelina. The heading is at the top of the page to help you understand what you're reading about. Yes, the heading is at the top of the page to help you understand what you're going to read about either on that page or the next couple of pages. It tells you what the information you're going to read about on those pages. Now, there is something, Levi, that does go along with the pictures, and those are called captions. Captions are little bits of words that describe a picture. picture even more. Hold on a second, friends. Let me answer the phone real quick. Hello? I uh, marked him as absent. Is it not saving again? Okay. Yep, bye. Okay. All right. So if we're going to pay a lot of attention to the captions in the pictures this time because it is something, first of all, that pops up on the test, but also because the captions give you a little bit more information about the story. So it's a good idea to understand what's going on with the pictures of the story because that also helps you understand the story altogether. So Schools Around the World is another informational story. It's by Margaret C. Hall. And we are going to see a lot of real photographs because... It's about different schools around the world. You're probably not going to see very many different schools around the world. Maybe you'll have the opportunity to go to one or two different places around the world to see schools, but we probably aren't going to see a lot of schools. Like if we go on vacation to a different country, a different part of the world, we don't usually go visit the school. So it's not very often that we're going to see schools in different countries. So it's a neat idea, or it's neat that we can see some of these different schools. Like the school that's on the front cover, or the front picture, looks a lot different than our school, doesn't it? Yeah. A lot different. To me, it almost looks more like a hotel, or a fancy house in a way. Not so much like a school, but it is a type of school. Now, Margaret C. Hall is our author. And remember, this is a heading too, but she tells you where we're going to see our author. We can find out information underneath that heading. She's written many nonfiction books for children. And her books include topics ranging from national parks to mallard ducks. Schools Around the World is a part of a series of books that she wrote. Other books in the series include Homes Around the World and Games Around the World. So she's written a lot of informational stories. And our essential question that we think about as we read through our story is how are some schools different from each other? So today when I read through the story, I'm just going to read through it so that we have it in our brains so that we can get familiar with it and then we can move on. All right. Here's our heading at the top of the page, schools around the world. All around the world, children go to school. Some children spend most of their day at school. Others spend only a few hours there. And here's a caption right underneath that first picture. This is a caption, so it's telling you more about that picture. It says, some school buildings in Asia are tall like this one. So that's another example of what a different school looks like, different than what ours looks like. It does kind of look like a hotel or an apartment building, right? Yeah. 
now I bet we recognize if you look at the top of the next page picture looks a lot kind of like ours in our classroom though we don't hold our flag we have one on the wall we look at one on the screen usually now because our announcements are on the screen but so the caption underneath this one says these students in an American classroom start their day by saying the Pledge of Allegiance just like we do schools are different in different parts of the world but they are all the same in one way schools are where children go to learn now at the bottom of page 441 we have a little blue box with a green heading that says amazing school facts so here's an amazing school fact a long time ago a german man started a new kind of school he thought that small children should grow like flowers in a garden he called his school kindergarten the word means children's garden in german okay so kindergarten is kindergarten or children's garden in german so you all started by going to kindergarten or to the children's garden right yeah so that was started in germany now the reason why the author put these in here and i'll talk about this a couple different times the reason why the author put these amazing school facts in here is because when she was doing her research and getting ready to write her book, she found some interesting facts about schools that didn't really fill the rest of the story, but she still thought it was interesting, so she wanted to share them. So she made like little interesting facts that she could put on the pages. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next page. Here's our heading, school buildings. And underneath the picture at the very top of the page, we have our caption. These students in Tibet, China are about to start their morning classes. That school looks a lot different than ours, doesn't it? Yeah. It looks like they have to even go outside to go from class to class. They don't have, it doesn't look like they have hallways. It looks like each classroom has an outside door instead of like a hallway. Interesting. All right, school buildings. The kind of school buildings children have depends on where they live. It depends on the climate and the resources of their community. School buildings can be large or small. They can be made from many different materials. Some children even go to school outside or in buildings with no walls. That would be nice if you lived in a warm area to go outside to school or a building that has no walls, but not where we live in the winter. Burr. Here's another amazing school fact with another picture. Schools have been around for thousands of years. The first schools were started to teach children about their culture. So when schools were first started, kids didn't learn reading and writing and math and science and social studies. They only learned about their culture, different ways that their group of people lived, how they dress, the foods they eat, their holidays they celebrate, things like that, okay? Here's our next heading at the top of page 443, getting to school. Children travel to school in many different ways. The kind of transportation they use depends on where they live. It also depends on how far they have to go. Many children walk or ride bicycles to school. Others ride in cars, on buses, or on a train. Some children go to school by boat. What? That would be interesting. Yeah, like, we will ride and they drive us back where the boat is from. And then we will jump off the boat and then, like... Maybe like a ferry boat that goes from place to place. Yeah, yeah. that would be very cool. Okay, yeah. and here's a picture of a boy riding his bike to school. Now, here's another amazing school fact. Now, this amazing school fact kind of reminds me of this year with a different kind of learning that we have. It says in some places, children live too far away from their school to go there. Teachers give lessons over the radio or by using computers that are hooked up to the school. Now, we don't have anybody that lives too far away to go to the school, but we, are also, we also have the virtual learning, the computer learning this year if we wanted to, you could have that choice. So, but some kids actually live so far away from their school that they cannot travel to the school. It would take too long for them to get to school every day and back from school every day. So they learn using a radio or on computers. Okay. Zayden, did you have a question? Yeah, 
Maybe, or they would have to get up really, 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 really early just to be able to get whatever transportation they need to get to school, get to school on time, stay in school all day, and then come home, but then it would be home really, 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 really late because it would take a long time to get home. Yeah. So it probably wouldn't be worth them traveling back and forth to school every day. Yes, Gwen? And just imagine if they have a sport like right after school. Exactly, yes. School. Yes. Kaden, do you have a question? Yes. Um, aren't you supposed to live in a school area like like I am in that that way you can go to school? Like an area of a school district? Yes, in a way. But some places, even in the United States, are so spread out that even though you live in the area that that school is, the area is really, really, really big. So you may not live close enough to actually be able to travel. So I'm thinking of like Alaska. In places in Canada that are really spread out and there's not very many people in a really big place okay so but that was an excellent question I also know too me growing up because I grew up in the country like the mountains in the country people rode horses to school yeah because or they rode their tractors to school what? that was another form of transportation so but they because they lived so far away the bus couldn't necessarily make it to their house because of where they lived on their farms so they would ride their horse to school or they would drive their tractor to school it was not uncommon to see tractors parked in the parking lot of the school where i grew up all right now on the next page we have school clothing we luck out. We can pretty much wear whatever we want to wear to school. Mm -hmm. We have a few rules for our school clothing, but we can wear pretty much anything. Yeah. Yes, Landon. Um, in England, I had to wear a school Did you have to wear a uniform? Yeah. Even around here, there's schools that wear uniforms. School clothing is our heading on 444. It says children around the world wear different kinds of clothing to school. What they wear often depends on the climate where they live. It also depends on what season it is. In some schools, the students all dress alike. They wear uniforms. Students from different schools have different uniforms. And we have two different pictures of girls that are wearing different kinds of uniforms. You'll notice that they look alike, dressed alike, but they are different styles of uniforms on that page. And it says students at this girls' school in Panama wear blue skirts and sweaters as part of their uniform. That goes along with the picture that's a square shape. Now, Around here, we also wear clothes depending on our climate. They use the word climate. <coughs> Excuse me. Climate is the kind of weather and temperature that an area has. So right now, like today, you do not see a lot of people in short sleeves and shorts because it's cold outside. We tend to wear long pants, long sleeves, sometimes hoodies or jackets or warmer clothes when it's colder, and then we will wear lighter clothes when it gets warmer okay so we can we change our clothing depending on the climate too even though we're not using wearing a uniform at the top of page 445 there's a caption under the picture that says these students in germany are learning science on a class trip with their teachers so it looks like they're taking a little field trip in a field it's a field trip get it <laughs> okay that was really bad okay the school day all around the world, teachers help students learn new things. Children do some schoolwork in groups. They do other schoolwork on their own. Most children eat lunch or a snack at school. They may also have time to play. At many schools, children take class trips too. Sounds a lot like our school, doesn't it? Yeah. We eat lunch, we eat a snack, we have time to play. Sometimes we take class trips, not right now during the coronavirus, but on a good time when it's healthy to be out we can take class trips we go to the zoo we go to the what was the hands-on place in lancaster we go to the pumpkin patch things like that okay apple orchards those kinds of things yes gwen my sister told me about the hands-on house the hands-on house in lancaster yeah that was a good place to go that was a new one but we just had a virtual field trip with the people at the burns center that was another place we could have gone to, but they came to us instead. It was still fun, even though we couldn't leave our classroom. It was still fun. Yes, Kaden. 
likely but that's something we can talk about later during a different time okay all right so uh, that school day sounds a lot like ours and on the next page here we go we have up at the very top another picture with a caption this teacher answers a question for his students at a school in Cuba learning to read and write is our heading one important job for teachers is to help children learn to read and write Students learn to read and write in many different languages. The language children use at school depends on where they live. Some children study their own language and another language too. And then we have at the top of the next page, a photo with a caption that says, at an American school overseas, students study a map of Europe. So this is an American school, but it's not in America. It's in another country, but they still study in American, they still study American studies at this school. And then we have the heading, Other Lessons. Children learn many things at school. All around the world, they study math and science. They learn about their own country and other countries too. Many children around the world study art and music in school. They may also learn how to use a computer. Now we learn how to use iPads and tablets too, right? <clears throat> and down at the very bottom, we have a picture of, it says, these students in Great Britain practice playing music at school. And as you get older, with Mr. Ishler, you can practice playing music too. You can choose an instrument and practice playing with him. Ah, school chores. At the top of the page, 448, we have a picture. It looks like the kids are serving lunch. It says, in this school in Japan, students help serve lunch. Can you imagine if that was your job? Oh. If you had to help serve lunch in the cafeteria as part of your schoolwork? Oh, I, I think that's a great responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Then we have the heading, school chores. Most children have chores to do at school. They help to keep the classroom neat and clean. They may even help to set up the classroom every day. In some places, children work to keep the schoolyard neat and clean. Some children may serve lunch to one another. Miss Sebastian, we're almost done, and then I'll have them go. Okay. 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 So we sometimes have school jobs, classroom jobs. We don't have them this year just to keep ourselves healthy and safe. We don't have those this year. But you may remember in kindergarten or in first grade, maybe you had a classroom job. Maybe it was your job to make sure that all the papers got passed out. Or it was your job to uh, sharpen pencils. Or maybe it was your job to check around, make sure the floor was clean at the end of the day. Or chairs were pushed in. Or, or the books were arranged on the shelf the right way. Or whatever your classroom job may have been. In this classroom, we even had plants to water. Because I always like to have plants. But I didn't bring them in this year because I didn't want them to die. So it, there's all different kinds of classroom jobs. That's kind of like having school chores. But they also have chores like making and serving lunch or cleaning up the playground. I think cleaning up the playground is a great school chore to have. And then after school, at the very top of that page, it says this teacher gives extra help to students after school. And at the bottom of that page, these boys in Israel learn about their culture. We have some children go to school even after the school day is over. They may have a tutor to help them with the subjects that are harder for them. Some, student, some children have other lessons after school. They study things they cannot learn in school. They may learn about dance, music, or their own culture. Or even something like gymnastics would be something that you would learn after school. Okay, those are things that you could learn after school. Oops. I knew I was going to knock those out eventually. All right. Special schools is on page 450. Now at the top of the page it says students at this boarding school eat, study, and live together. So there are some schools where children live there all year round. They live at the school. Maybe they go home for the weekends. Maybe they go home for the holidays. There's a school in Hershey that's like that where the children go and live at the school and then they go and visit their family on holidays and weekends. So special schools. Some children live at their schools. These schools are called boarding schools. The children go home for visits and on holidays. 
Now, this picture right here, it says, this girl cannot see. She goes to a school where she can learn to read and write in a special way. People who are blind read with their fingers. They use a system of raised dots called Braille. And then we have homeschooling. Now, if you're virtually learning, in a way you're kind of homeschooling, but there's also people who learn just from their parents or somebody at their home, not even virtual schooling. A home can also be a school. Some parents teach their children at home. They want to decide exactly what their children will learn. People at schools will often help parents plan home lessons for their children. Many children who study at home go to a school for gym or art classes. And at the bottom of that page, the caption says, this mother is teaching her daughter at home. And I believe there's one more page. Nope, two more pages. Two more sections. School and work. Some children work as performers. They spend part of their day practicing the work that they do. They spend the rest of the day studying regular school subjects. And at the bottom, we have a photo with a caption. The students below perform a traditional Russian dance. So some children go to school to learn how to do their performance and to study at the same time. So they learn different things. Here's another amazing school fact. Some of you might find this one interesting. One of the subjects that was taught in ancient Greece was gymnastics. So they taught that in school. The ancient Greeks thought gymnastics was just as important to learn as math or reading. I will agree to that. Gymnastics is just as important to learn. And then down at the bottom, there's a picture of a boy that's learning gymnastics. So they learned that in school, kind of like gym class in a way, but not as... Gym class is a bunch of different things. Older students is at the top of page 454. Many people go to school even after they are adults. They may go to college or they may go to a trade school to learn how to do a certain job. Adults also take classes for fun. They study different languages and learn how to do things. No matter how old students are, they go to school to learn. We have a picture at the top. It says these women in India go to school at night and it looks like the picture of, at the bottom is a man using a microscope. Maybe he's going to school for that. And I think that's the end of our story. Yep. Okay. So this